Hi guys, yet another video on the Immersion RC Zugong V2 Pro. Um, now this is one that is hopefully going to help quite a few people out. Um, I've had a lot of questions about it. Uh, people who aren't using PPM, um, one of obviously the most popular receivers and transmitters is Futaba and the SBUS configuration and a lot of people who have NASA's have SBUS for that reason. Um, now basically I have taken off my Easy UHF and I have plugged in my trusty R7008SB which comes with the Futaba 14SG. I'm using exactly the same wiring configuration as I have for Easy UHF so this wire goes from the SBUS port to the PDB board. It then has the second wire that comes out of the PDB board and it goes to the X2 port of the NASA. No need to change anything there. All that's happening there is there's a direct path between receiver and NASA. The only difference is that the PDB board picks up that signal and it tries to decode a PPM signal if one exists. If it doesn't exist, it just ignores it. And that's the reason that this problem is occurring because it can't decode SBUS, which means when you plug it in, you find that your gimbal either tilts down fully or you have no control over it basically you can't control the tilt on the gimbal and um, there's two methods to doing this the uh, the one that doesn't involve any of the wiring that I'm doing here which is very simple um, the, the one that it doesn't involve that is to just buy a, something like a Frysky uh, SBUS to PPM converter adds a bit of weight takes a little bit more money out of your pocket but is a kind of a proven concept and that will give you full PPM functionality However, if you just want to be able to tilt your gimbal, this method works very well and it's really quite simple to do. All you need to do is you just have to take this port here, this is your gimbal plug. Now there's normally four wires in there, however there's only three at the moment and that is because I have just plucked out of the cable, which is very easy to do, you just take a little craft knife just like you would a servo cable and you just get the pin out of there um, and you just take that so it's the fourth one, the last one on the right as you're looking at the Zugong from face on. Um, you just take that out and then obviously you want a more permanent solution than I'm showing you here but you then need to take that wire and run it to the front of the NASA, not the back of the NASA and you just need to run it down, hopefully we can see that, to the front part. Now at the front of the NASA there are the M1 to M4 ports However, there is also a port of F1 and F2, and you want to put it in the bottom connector of F2. That is the signal connector of F2. It's the furthest pins on the left-hand side as you're looking forward at the NASA, and it's just that bottom one. You don't need to worry about voltage or ground. That's all done through the, um, the, the connector here. You just need that signal wire. So you just literally, that's all the wiring you have to do. Run it to that cable there. Now once you've done that, the only other things that you've got to do is you've got to go into your NASA Assistant and you've got to go into the RC settings and you've got to make sure that you're using D-Bus. So you don't want to use traditional, you don't want to use PPM, you want to use D-Bus and that's basically S-Bus. That will allow you to communicate with your NASA and chances are you've already done that if you're using um, an S-Bus receiver. Once you've done that, you also then need to make sure that in the gimbal setting that you go to the gimbal setting and you turn it on. You don't want it turned off. Now, if you're using Easy UHF or a PPM connector, it's recommended that you leave that off because you don't want to confuse the um, the output. However, if you're using SBUS, you just need to turn it on. And I'll show you the settings that I've got at the moment. I think maximum and minimum minimum are set to uh, minus a thousand and a thousand, um, center at zero, and that seems to work absolutely fine um, from my point of view. However, there is a bit of fiddling, and I did do a video probably a couple of years years back now um, showing how to set up the NASA with uh, a Fayetech G3 gimbal which is basically what you're using. Um, one note, I have got a Fayetech G3 gimbal on the front of this rather than the Immersion RC one. No difference whatsoever in it what's, uh, at all. This is a slightly older one. The reason I haven't got the Immersion RC one plugged in at the moment is because I managed to stuff it into a large piece of wood and I've killed it off uh, which is a bit of a shame. But um, anyway I'm going to be using Zen Moose on mine as we've all seen already from uh, my other videos. However, just to prove the concept, what I'll do now is I'm just going to plug the battery in and just show you how it all works. Okay, so power on, gimbal will twitch in a moment to kick into life. There we go, so gimbal is now on. So if I now move to a position where you can see my little dial, so I have channel 5 set to um, this little dial, so if I move it forward it tilts forward and if I move it back 
it tilts all the way back and goes to the top. Now the way this happens will depend on the firmware version that you've put on your G3 gimbal. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what they're called but I think there's a, a fast version um, and a normal version. It's all videos that I've done before in the setup video, so just have a look at those. But basically, yeah, if I want to tilt slowly down, I only tilt slightly, and then I stop by going center, tilt back, I go all the way back, and then do that. So it, there's no kind of central position. If I just move it to the center, it won't do anything. Uh, you have to self-center it. But that's just the mode of the gimbal. Anyway, the point is you have control of your gimbal. You can do a tilt. You can just mix it to a channel. I have it on channel 5. Like I say, channel 5 is what's operating this, um, the which is the X1 channel as it is in the NASA. So exactly the same as you would with a Zenmoose from that point of view. But hopefully that helps a few people out. Um, the only thing that you will be missing, obviously, from the point of view of not having PPM is the uh, the camera switch. Um, I might, if I get a chance, try and fiddle around to see whether the, the F2 port might be possible to use that for um, for the camera switch. I don't think it will be, unfortunately. Um, and obviously if it does work, I'll try and get a video online. Um, but uh, anyway, hopefully that's helped a few people out. Obviously any questions, post a comment.